You are watching Leicester Till I Die TV. Good afternoon, everybody. Are you well? Well, good afternoon, good evening, good day, good morning. Hello, wherever you are in the world. I hope you're having a wonderful day, whatever part of the day it is for you. Wherever you are around the world, come on in, say hello. This is LTID TV. And this is, of course, it's back, back again. <laughs> but with a brand new look, it is this week's prediction show for game week 41 and 42. And it is brought to you with Surrey Hills Community Radio. So, a little bit of to me to you in the background going on. You are here for the Predictions League. And if you don't want to uh, see our, our beautiful faces, me and my co-host, you can, of course, catch up if, you've, if you're at work, maybe you're trying to catch up with it, or you just like to listen to us and not see our faces. You can check us out on all these local pod, podcast platforms. All you need to do is ask your smart speaker to play the Lester Till I Die podcast. You can't say LTI TV because it just doesn't work sometimes, but just say that, speak away. And of course, if you want to follow us here, there and everywhere across the globe, it is LTI T. Oh, easy for me to say. Take two. It's not live. It's all right. We're good. LTID TV2 on all social media platforms. From our Facebook group to YouTube to to Twitter to or X as you want to call it to TikTok where where we are trying to reach one thousand TikTokers top TikTokers I, you can tell I don't follow it can't you I'm no good with all this this, this new monarchy I'm sounding old at thirty three but of course you can follow us there and that will help us be able to go live over there so it's another platform for you lovely people to find all things LTID TV two oh can I say that out loud. Yes, that's our sister channel. Yes, you early birds are going to get it here. This first shameless plug of the show. We have a secondary channel. It is all things LTID TV, Leicester City, in terms of the women's football and a lovely women's quiz, which my co-host in the background is going to be contesting on the two of. So if you like football quizzes, Leicester varieties, or you just want to get into the women's football, go over to LTID TV too and hit subscribe and, uh, and go and check us out. Much appreciated, guys. But without further ado, it is, as one would say, to me, to you, the prediction show. We are here. It is gone seven o'clock now, so we are live and kicking. Are you Paul or are you Barry or are you just Dave? Dave, how are you, my friend? He's how unbelievable, isn't he? Unbelievable. I know. <laughs> I do try. I do try, mate. Uh, how have you been? I'm good, pal. Thank you. Yep. All good. Much the better after last week. Oh wow, yeah. I mean, hey, much... you you mocked me on the prediction show last week when I said four one. I weren't that well, far out. So. You weren't too far out. A bit like when I got mocked for going eight nil against Stoke and we only won five nil. But unfortunately, yeah, just like winning is only worth three points, Dave. Your prediction was only worth one itself. But you had a good week. You At had a good week. Oh, did I? And, uh, oh, in I fact, a few people well. had very good weeks. Um. And all the predictions are in. So the, the, the polls, the lines have closed. Please do not cast your vote uh, for, for if you're in the predictions group because you still may be charged by your provider. We have got a game at 8 o'clock, but you have already locked in. I have already locked in. And I've got Craig's and Chris's written down for the fun as well. But everybody's got theirs locked in because there, are, there is an 8 o'clock game. Are you hoping for another good week, Dave? Because you did have a good yeah. week. I didn't realise that, but yeah, it makes a change. 
Um, oh, no. Um, well, Chris just saying there, adult 23, 24 applicants down to £30. In for a penny, in for a pound with a fine that could be coming our way. We, uh, maybe we can get into this luxury task. Tax. Yeah. No more saying no more. But yeah, yeah. Dave, uh, I, I don't know how you predict this league. I, I really don't. Well, um, apparently I like to predict 12 nils because that's a prediction that I had to go and edit in the group chat. But I have written down more sentiment <laughs> than 12 nil. However, if 12 nil actually happens, I get 100 points. I spoke to the board of directors. He he laughed, so I assumed he okayed it. Um, just a quick hello to some of you in the chat. John says hello. Good evening, John. Uh, Ronald, nice to see you as always. He says good evening, Brad. Scott, the ever reliable, is in. He says evening. Hope you're all well. Less than yeah, yeah. I get there in the end, don't I? And thanks for seven attempts. It's not live. It's fine, Chris. We'll cut it out. I thought Chris had to do his shopping. Well, yeah, but Chris lives a way. Well, he gets his shop and delivered, doesn't he? The old, uh, he's on the, uh, the hatch. Comes up no, the hatch. no, no, he's on Audi gate, isn't he? <laughs> if you know the story, you know the story, folks. Yeah. Uh, then I must have, I must have gone up, up that table a bit this week. Well, Spencer, all I'm going to say is to those of you that are involved in the league table, don't get too excited. Because somebody's in the wrong position and it is my fault because I type up the table for Chris. He copies and pastes it into the table and he has, you know, he does the hard work of, of putting it in. And when you see yourself in a certain position, Spencer, maybe don't get too excited. Realise that you're in a false position in the lightest way possible. We will get to that table in a minute, though. Uh, oh, look, your first fan of the week's in. Uh, Dave, John no, acknowledges Hi, John. you. You've been in. Uh, and so does Ronald. He says the happy happy meals in the post. <laughs> uh, a few more comments to get through, and then we'll talk about the early one. Uh, Scott says, and of course, do what Scott says. He says, please, everybody, smash the like button and subscribe to this great channel. Yeah, the likes just help people that may like this channel and love little things less to find this channel quicker. It's just a click on the way in. I normally say, make sure on the way out, um, leave a like. On the video, make sure you're doing it on the way in if you can. Saves you a job on the way out, doesn't it? Yes, I did think that. And of course, nip over to this channel. Apparently, Scott, where's the number two? You're missing the number two. He's, he, 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 the staff, you can't get them these days, can you? Um, I hope that's not for sponsorship because I'm I'm not getting involved with after doing some modeling. You'll scare the subscribers away, mate. Uh, and, and and Scott, better late than never. He does acknowledge you, Dave. He recognizes your presence. He says, "Hi, you too, mate." Uh, no so you guys out. down below, you're probably waiting for the table because we're, we're trying to draw this out as best I can. Yeah. So I, I actually remember what it is I've got to do. Are you ready to get see how well you all really did, though, Dave? I mean, I know you came in late with with um, with Luke, so you kind of have in a basement battle. Let's see how much it's improved. Well, first of all, <laughs> congratulations to Shane and uh, Shane O'Donnell held on to top mm. spot ahead of Dog. In fact, he got a point back in the dog and extended his lead to four points. The gap is very tight at the top, road championship-esque. Uh, but Steve, Steve is not too far, hot on the tail, a few shy of 300. And really, still anybody's game at that top three, isn't it, Dave? Hang on, Shane got 55 points. There we go, there we go. Dave clocked it first. Well done, Dave. I was going to get there with the point, but you no, dragged but, it out but... of me. Yeah, Spencer, don't get too excited. You're, you're, no, this is Dave. Did, did you clean your ears out properly? Did you not, say, did you not hear me say there was a boo boo in the table when Spencer said he should have gone up it? That was a big well, clue Spencer, that I yeah, made an but... error in how I typed it and rearranged it. What I didn't change was was their order on my list when I wrote it down. So I I copied it to and sent it to Chris like that, and he's just copied and pasted how I sent it him. So Spencer, That's unfortunately. True. The table lies. You are 12. Shane, you are 11th. I'm sorry. I, mean, I, I got mean, that Shane wrong. O. Shane O got 55 points. No, that's how many he's got correct result right. You get you get you get three points if you get it bang on. That's what yeah. that side of things is, Dave. I see. Gordon Bennett. Yeah, I, I, mean, I thought you was on about my mistake because it's both. It's, no, it's, no, it's no I wouldn't. Be involved mistakes. Shane and D and Shane O. Shane Downs. We all make mistakes. With. But yeah, um, Shane's, uh, Shane O'Donnell's keeping on top. And that is essentially, to make it easy for you to understand, Dave, that 55 Please. column and downwards is essentially goal difference. 
So all okay. three have a slight goal difference if the points were to be level come the end of the season. There would be a three-way tie, I guess, for uh, for first place if that did happen. So it's vital that you think hard in these predictions because they can make up some weeks and they can save some weeks. They saved mine for sure. I had a couple come in that saved my week from being a bad one. And uh, yeah, sorry, Spencer, the, the, the joy of being 11th is short-lived. It's just a, it's just a graphical error. But that aside, there is lots of mini battles going on. You are slowly catching up to Luke. Unfortunately, he had a better week than yourself, but you mm. both still had um, had uh, improved weeks. But you look at that table, Dave, Shane included in this, the 259, but anyone from Shane all the way up to probably, probably not Jeff, but definitely Chris, could still have a battle for that like top seven, if you will. You know, the big seven, the seven heaven, if you want to, the European spots of all trades. You know, there's a battle on it again, all the way down to to Jeff isn't really out of the title race. So it's a great league to be a part of, isn't it, Dave? Even if we were late to the ball, well, you and Luke. If I get 20 results exactly right, I'm still third from bottom or second from bottom. But but it's not bottom, is it? No, it's not. What is it if it's not bottom? Well, you it's see, that's close like that. to the bottom. <laughs> well, it's as close really as you can get, but you wouldn't be the wooden spoon of the group. Um, I have missed something there. Oh, he had the number two earlier. Um, okay, um, I've missed part of the conversation. Uh, uh, I did badly this week, John. I don't think anyone actually did terrible. It's just some people, uh, quite a few people, actually hit home runs with with correct scores um that 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 served them well otherwise most people would have been in the low to mid teens but a few people just stormed out the blocks with a few chris was one of them see they have moved our game with preston monday bloody nuisance yeah but it's it's we wouldn't be on telly if we weren't in in a in a title race so that's the only reason john i've been the same sometimes late goals have killed me um Probably wouldn't have benefited me with the people I'm in my own competition with, but it it is it has cost me points throughout. I get Nick DeMarco. I'll get Nick DeMarco involved, and I'll send you the fine in the post, Spencer. Don't you worry. I'll send you the Man City lawyers. That's a they'll help me out. Right, we've dragged it out long enough. We've got to the table. We get into the fun part now. It's the prediction show. Game week forty one. Of, of, of 41, we're doing 42 as well. The midweek games, eight o'clock kickoff, bottom place Rotherham in 24th, uh, at home to well, Plymouth, who a few weeks ago I didn't see being in trouble. Uh, eve, evening, uh, Paddy, evening, evening, Paddy, back from his vets, but it's must be possible to catch you, Brad. If starting out, I don't think so, mate. I don't think so. But join us next season, mate. The same show will be running, hopefully a Premier League one, which I am the champion of. Two-time undefeated champion, just saying. But anyway, back to the real business. Plymouth I'd have said we're safe, but have been on such a bad run since since um, like the last four or five games or so, to the point that they've now sat the manager. Plymouth really need that um, fear-nothing fear approach, don't they, to this game to win it? Because this is... Games are running out. We're into that last six, seven, if you're if you're us, um, and a few other clubs. Games like this, Plymouth can't lose. They can't afford to lose to a team which, with the greatest respect, um, are down. You know, they they, they need more than a miracle, um, probably to stay up, not just to win games, but other teams to lose them that are so far ahead. So for Plymouth, this is almost a must win. A six, excuse me, a six pointer, if you will. Dave, yeah. is that going to be the case, though? Yeah, I think so. I think there might be some goals in it, though. Oh, John's gone to cause a stir. I think Plymouth will get two more than that and win three two. Sorry, you won't. You won't. Plymouth are going to win three two. Three, two. Oh, yeah. he's gone adventurous. You love your goals, Dave. I love your predictions, reading well, sometimes. Time of year, isn't it? Uh, in fact. I think you actually got three points maybe from the Southampton Ipswich game. Oh, no, you went three all. No, I, I went so. three all. Yeah, yeah, you did. You went three all, but you've had one that was quite a good one you had. So, Dave, you went three to Plymouth. 
I got out the Chris's fo Chris Forian fence panel and I sat on the fence first game in and I've gone for a 1 1 draw. Mm. Chris has backed the Argyle, he's gone 2 1. And Craig, our other LTID TV representative, he's backed a Rotherham 2 1 as well as John has. There's just oh, John has backed the 2 1 to the, to the Rotherham. So more misery expected by most for Plymouth. But that's tonight's game, so we might get some goal alert updates <laughs> live, as they say, um, from the New York Stadium, I believe their stadium's called. Yeah, ridiculous, right, is that? Yeah. Which I believe was a, was, it's a wonderfully named stadium, because if you ever want to tell the missus, I'm going to take you away, I'm going to take you to a night out in New York. <laughs> she's going to get excited until she realises she's watching a Rotherham game. Um, cr um. Craig's come in. He's gone 2 0 to Plymouth. He thinks they'll bounce back. Um, and Scott has gone for a big win for Plymouth. He's gone 4 0 to Plymouth. Well, that game is just over 40 minutes away from kickoff. So hopefully we can get ourselves gone and, and I say enjoy that game. I don't think I'll be paying it any interest if I'm being perfectly honest. Sorry, Rotherham okay. and Plymouth. I think that's for the diehards or the desperates tonight. If you, if you need a football intake, that's the only game you've probably got. And well, no, it's Premier League, isn't there? Is that, is that just me? I don't know. I don't keep well, that. The good thing is we're not playing tonight. Well, there is that. But we are playing We are playing tomorrow, but not first. However, first are playing. See how that mm. works? We're not yeah. first, first are playing. It is the um, East Anglian derby. Have I said that right? I'm yep. very proud if I have. It's the Suffolk, Suffolk Suffolkshire derby, isn't it? Suffolk Norfolk. No, Norfolk's Suffolk Suffolk Norfolk. Derby. Hey, I'm uh, well. I'm not a pretty face, but I'm not just a pretty face. I, I, I've got brain in there somewhere. Not for predictions, but it's the twelve thirty kickoff. It is playoff hunt in Norwich, who have teams chasing them behind them. The chasing pack. Yes, Norwich would still need to drop points, but games in hand can put pressure on. They are at home to first place. They always say, don't they? First, and the, first is the worst. So yeah. And that, but impressive as they've been, the Tractor Boys will be looking to maintain um, top spot. We've had the pressure on us twice, Dave. We crumbled once. We succeeded the second time of asking. Ipswich are late goal merchants, so we know no results done. They could be 3-0 down in the 90th minute, and they'll score the 91st, 93rd, and the 96th minute, knowing us. I mean, I would take it. East Anglian derby. So, so did I say it right? I don't know. I probably yeah. didn't. You did. Um, Oh, John had me worried then when he put that comment. I always feel like someone corrected me. But is this is this the chance? This is what I say it to it, and, and I kind of probably cursed it for Leicester, but I'd say out of the three teams, because I'm I'm ruling Southampton out because of their yeah, yeah. Well, their the list. I, yeah. I did I did say that their games being so clustered together is going to come at them, and I think it will bite them in the arse, I'm afraid. But for me. I think this is a game where it would show their frailties a little bit. This is the first time now that it would have been top of the championship and the pressure's on them. This is their first time they're top at 12.30, I believe. Um, and for that reason, because it's at Norwich, I've gone 2-1 to Norwich. That's probably my Leicester heart that's stopped me going for a draw there, I'll be honest with you. But, Dave... Over to Ipswich yeah. early doors for a change. Yeah, it is. Um, and Ipswich have got a bad record, I think, lately at Norwich, which is good. Um, but I still think they'll win 3 2. I think they'll they'll get they'll be 2 1 down with 92 minutes gone and they'll score two goals. You love a 2 3, don't you? He's Dave is not there. Well, actually, I've just looked at them. Yeah, I do. Well, actually, for the first three results, anyway. Well, He's gone for an Ipswich win. Chris has sat on the fence. He's gone for his Desmond. He's gone for a 2-2. Didn't take him long to go 2-2. But Craig has backed the mighty Norwich. I've always said good things about Norwich. I've always liked Norwich. And if Norwich lose at 12.30, I hate Norwich. I'm never going there. Right? I'm not fickle. Um, but Craig went 2-1 as well. Yeah, the East Anglia and Derby. John has gone for a Desmond. Him and 2-2. Martin. Uh, Neil. Sorry. That was... So wrong with me. Yeah, Pre they are, was yeah. it there? 
has gone. Ipswich of World Jewel win. Well, let us know what you think. Uh, if you think that, uh, let us know the score predictions down below. Neil, you're more than happy for you to join in. Uh, fingers crossed Norwich does a favour. 2-1 two, two, Norwich. I think Leicester basically have to win all their games. It sounds easy and it sounds simple, but I, and it sounds like a really obvious point. But I think Leicester just need to do that because I think... I don't know if I see Ipswich or Leeds losing. I hope, and maybe I've used that to predict some things, but I can see them dropping points. So I'd be happy with a draw. Um, Scott would be happy yeah. with making me a heart attack and not see how Leicester do, because he's gone Norwich for Ipswich 3. Look, as long as that's 4 nil in 94 minutes and then they have a mad rush yeah. of goals and the referee blows full-time, I'll, I'll take that, Scott. Um Neil is back in. He's gone three one. It's two goals in the last ten minutes. I mean, we might as well call them Fergie Time Town, can't we? Because they always score in the last minute of play. So just to recap, uh, I went two one Norwich. Chris went two two. Craig went two one Norwich, and Dave went three two to Ipswich. I wonder if the three o'clocks are going to be a less little bit less goal happy. You've gone for the first one uh, on the list. It's disappointing. Disappointing and fading away is how I would describe both these two teams uh, as a little fact there. Uh, Ipswich last beat Norwich in 2009, so the, the, they are probably due a win over Norwich. Let's hope that can stay on until next season when they both don't make it in the playoffs. Um, Blackburn, disappointing, first of all, 17th. A lot was expected of them. I know they lost some key players, but it's, it's a name that they've got bored of my show. They've got bored of my show, people. I can't see it. But I'll let you know. 17th place, Blackburn. I don't know about you guys, but I think they've been disappointed by even their own fan standards and expectations. Uh, a manager, it didn't really work out. And yes, a few results have turned it around a little bit, but 17th is utterly... It's got to be below par for even the most pessimistic of Blackburn fan. And they are at home to a team that, pop, that shot themselves in the foot. Uh, what was it? Was it 2-1 two, two, or 2-0? Two, 2-2, uh, two, two, sorry. Went Southampton, when, 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 when Southampton were, were winning the game when they went down to 10 men. And then they just lost it, didn't they? They just, they just lost it to, to Ipswich. So faded away, in my opinion, from the automatic race. I think it's a three-horse race now. Uh, the Leicester just needs to stay ahead of. I can see them doing this. As much as I'd like to see Southampton drop more points, I don't think I care anymore if they do, um, because I don't think they affect uh, the, the the playoff race. I think they're they're about they're, they're two more points away from being completely out of it. As Dave is trying to come back in, here he is. I, I've gone two one Southampton. Chris, he went for a draw. Craig. Not you, Craig, but LTIDs, Craig. He has gone for a. He went for a two-two. He's gone for a Desmond. Dave, I don't know if you heard any of that. I'm talking about the disappointment, disappointing child that is Blackburn Rovers at home to yeah. playoff, playoff hopeful Southampton. You'd have to say. I, I think Blackburn more. will win. I think you think Blackburn, Blackburn will win? Will win. Yeah, Three, I think two, they're yeah. only a bad result away. I think they need a perfect record, and they're yeah. hoping for too much off. Any of, yeah, I mean, you're not, you know, it's not like they're asking one team to go on bad run and completely capitulate in these six games. They're, ask, they're asking two of the three teams above them to capitulate, sneaking, and I just don't see it. No, it's not. What, what have you going for then if you're going for a black man win, mate? 3 2. Are you just going to go 3 2 all the way down? So I just start no, guessing. That's my last one. Up. That's my last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a whole bloody two weeks worth here. I'm sorry about that earlier. I am. Um... I think you're lying. Who's betting that Dave goes for another th five five goals in like another three two? No, that's no. it. Yeah, all right. We'll see. Uh, where were we in the comments? I just catch up with them before we move on to the next game. Uh, Scott says I agree, Brad. We can only focus on our results, preferably wins, and hope other teams drop us points. Yeah, look, we score, didn't we, Dave? Yeah. After we yeah. played Norwich, level playing field. We we're on the same games played, so essentially that game in hand was what we were playing there. We went top. Of both, yeah. there was no goal difference in it. We were top. We played the same games as Ipswich and Leeds, and we were still top. And if Leicester can keep that going, 
play that game in hand, that's where they will end up being come game week for four to six. All yeah. things off the yeah. pitch aside, that's what matters trying to do right now. Yeah. For for me. And Ipswich are gonna struggle at the end of April. They've got three well, they got two pretty good games. And because that Coventry game's been rearranged for the thirtieth. Yeah. So yeah. Two games so in three days. To congestion. Long way up to home. Then over to Coventry. So that could be a interesting one. It could be. It could be. I mean Wolves nine oh one comes as I just can't see every team winning out. I mean, that's the thing, though, isn't it? It, it, It's such a tight league. It it could happen just as easy as you could not win the next six games somehow. You know what I mean? It's just that's been that sort of crazy season. Neil, bless you. My uncle's an Ipswich fan, so I do know what it's like. He he dies a little inside when it happens, uh, this fixture. Um, He says, I'm an Ipswich fan. I'm more aware of our record. It's a horrible run against us. But all good and bad things have to come for an end. Like I said, I hope it happens for you next season. But... (laughs) <laughs> All good and bad things come to an end. I think Norwich um, were very poor, weren't they, at our place? Yeah, they were. Uh, they were better like at a... home. They're poor away they... and good at home. That's the only yeah, problem. They did not look like a side. They did not look, look like a side that yeah. enjoys being away from home. And they're going to have to, if they're going to go up through the playoffs, they're just going to have to hope. They really are going to have to hope that they get a good away game performance and, and do even better at home. John's gone 3 1. To Southampton, 20 in the chat and 15 likes. Please, everyone, smash that like button. There's 21 of you now. Someone else has snuck in. Hey, hey don't you leave and not hit that like button unless you've left to hit the like button <laughs> and realize you didn't have to leave. That's fine. That's fine. But yeah, thanks for all your support, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, it shows us how much you enjoy just waffling and trying to make sense of it. Uh, up the departments and all uh, up the chairs and all departments. I strongly think we have missed opportunity to go up automatically. I think we're up third. Well, like I said, Scott, win all our games or better or, or match other teams' results alongside it while whilst we do it. You beat Southampton, we go top. Um the biggest concern the Saints could take points off you. They could, but they just don't look like it for me. Um it's two big games, aren't they? West Brom and Southampton. Yeah, we so three days for us. So we well, at least we're at home. Yeah, and the thing is, right, and we don't want to jinx it because, you know, no. Bristol City, but We've you'd like to think if we are going to go automatically, Dave, we have to lay the foundations now with Birmingham and Millwall coming up, get yeah. them big wins and try and get in a position where losing to Southampton, as bad as it sounds, doesn't really kill us, if you know what I mean. Mm, yeah. Like, it's it's a bonus game up for grabs, if you know what I mean. That's what I, I wanted to make. Yeah, that Plymouth away is a bit of a worry now, isn't it? Now they've got the sack the manager and the guy's well, got points to prove. Well, they do, but if you go into it confidently, it yeah, shouldn't, yeah. you know what I mean? If we go into that on a good few wins, Dave, all of a sudden, we're, all right, the expectation raises, but you, you feel like we'd do it. I certainly feel like we'd be able to do it. So, well, we are to a run again, aren't we? Yeah, because we've got to remember as well, the one thing we have an advantage in this title race, and it could all go peak tongue, but if I'm talking everything goes swimmingly, our tough games are at home. We've yeah. just played Norwich at home, beaten them. We've got Southampton at home. We've got West Brom at home. So our toughish fixtures, you feel we should have the advantage. Well, you're supposed to have the advantage, aren't you? Playing home, obviously, doesn't always work out. Like that. But you'd feel like the crowd, especially if the form's good, and Leicester are already sat in first, you know, a point or two back in front, and then they're playing a game in hand against Southampton. That crowd's going to be electric. But before we get ahead of ourselves, and before Norwich fans and them so get ahead of themselves, thinking they're going on a playoff journey, Hull City might want to have something to say about that. They're away at Cardiff, and Cardiff are one of them few teams. Now, now the games and the, the games are getting a bit shorter, and the points gap between them and anywhere else is getting a bit too big to catch up. They're all way Cardiff City don't really have anything to play for. We've seen with Bristol that can be dangerous for us. Will it be dangerous for Hull? Or are in danger of completely blowing their their chase for the playoffs? They've slipped from seventh uh, right up, uh, you know, right up the backside of Norwich all the way down to tenth. Do they get back in track in this game? Um, Because I just don't see it. No, no, I don't. And the trouble is with these sort of games, Cardiff and Hull, they either score loads of goals or none. So I've gone for the nil-nil. I think it'll be a ball draw. You think it'll be the ball on ITV4? He's gone there. He's gone low. He's gone nil-nil. 
and uh, ask for your refunds uh, at the stadium, apparently. Oh, yeah. Um, Brad said two things you've uh, Scott says two things you've all liked there, Brad. We have hard games, we have hard home games, and the crowd getting behind the team at home is not great. Our away fans seem louder at home fans. Yeah, but the thing is, right, all logic, Scott, goes out the window in them last few games because everybody gets nervously excited. And the more Leicester win, you know, fingers crossed, the more it still keeps going right. And a win against Birmingham and suddenly leads or or Ips would slip up. Leicester go top. It's funny what it does to you as a football fan because I remember the King Power being reasonably loud throughout that relegation survival season, you know, the great escape. But the difference in atmosphere from that home game at West Ham, Dave, if you remember it, the pretty much the start of the run that we went on to stay up. Yeah. That was a different kettle of fish. And that was only the last like seven or eight games of the season, wasn't it? Where we just started. I think we went on, we lost like one in 11, didn't we? And it was against Chelsea, who were champions elect. And yeah. we, we, even, we were even level in that game or ahead or something. We are, I know we were definitely level or ahead at one point in the game. So it just does something different. The crowd becomes a different breed. It feels like, doesn't it? When they've got something to cheer on. Now they know what they're aiming for and they've got to fight for. They get behind the lads. Yeah, you can imagine, can't you, this weekend, we beat Birmingham, Leeds draw at Coventry and Ipswich can't beat Norwich. Totally different game altogether again. But, yeah. you know, will it happen? Yeah. As, as, and of course, Daisy, can, David can turn just like that. We saw it with a yeah. nervous, with nervous atmosphere at Norwich, but the crowd all sort of said, "Well, we've got. If we do our part, then the, then the players don't do theirs, and it's on the players." And and, and both did their job right, against Norwich. We just got to keep that atmosphere going to the end. Uh, but we'll crack on because the two teams you mentioned are coming up next, and it's a juicy tie to talk. You've gone nil nil. I, after saying that, do think Hall. We'll just snag a win here. I don't know what it is. I just feel like just when you think that there's a team that's out of the race or out of the promotion zone, they they find a win and suddenly look look half decent in form again. So I've gone two one Hall. If I was to tell you that Chris had gone for a draw, would you believe me? Yeah, probably two two. Well, <laughs> you you called it nailed on to a point. He's got the Desmond out again, <laughs> folks. For four fixtures in, Chris three draws. If he ever says he's not the draw specialist, tell him he's a liar. Four games in, three draws. He's gone for a two-two, but Craig has joined him. He's gone for a one-one. So Craig is two draws out of that. I'm 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 just saying I'm the only one that hasn't gone for a draw yet. Maybe I'm a fool for not going for it. Who knows? John doesn't think I'm a uh, a fool. He's going to start saying I'm copying his homework. Though usually Chris copies it. He's gone two one to Hall. Uh, always try to be mate. You might as well. What's the point being negative about it? You might as well come with a positive attitude and and try and take it on. Um, Ke Ooh. Kevin, Kevin. I don't know if that's supposed to be Kevin. I can, I can never pronounce names. I'm useless. I'm looking for the E I N. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking for the spelling I know of Kevin. I'm, I'm assuming it is. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, he's gone 3-1 Cardiff. Uh, Scott's gone 3-0 Hall. It's a bit divided in the chat because uh, uh, Paddy, Paddy the Vet's gone. Cardiff 1, Hall 0. Uh, yes, I'd, I'd have believed you that Chris has gone for a draw. Love sitting on the fence. I told you, Florian's fences. If Chris ever gives up his YouTube job and you want... What, Panel, panels, I'm sure I'm telling you, he'll end up one of he's got the name for it. Uh Neil's gone in. Oh, it is Kevin, is it? Cheers. Sorry, I didn't want to be horrible. Kevin, I call someone it's, the wrong it's, name. Irish, it's Irish, isn't it? Was. Irish. I think it is, it is, because um they have spellings for names and it, it, some of them I know, some of them I just know. I really should have just guessed and stuck with it and played my cards for a chess. Something noble, noble. something like that. Noble blood or noble birth or breed or something like that. Something mm. noble. Ah, uh, well, you know more I think, about it than I'm I mate. think I could well be wrong. This is where, this is where Kevin comes in and tells you talking absolutely. Bollocks, yeah. <laughs> now then, it's yeah. funny, this, isn't it? They say the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Could this be the case for Leicester fans? It's um, a tricky one, isn't it? Come three o'clock because it is. Playoff hunt in Coventry City, who are a little bit closer than 20, 25 points off Leicester, but they're not 
much closer, I don't think. In fact, they might still be a bit further off behind that, actually. I think they might still be, actually, now I've said that. Coventry City, seventh, at home to Leeds. Are we asking for our enemy, the smaller side of the M69 derby, which is a massive derby, folks, in case you're wondering, because if it, if it's a motorway derby, it's massive. We all know the outcome. We all know the drill. I'm going to be honest, I've let my heart run my head. I, I, I'd rather Marvel team up with Coventry and see Leeds lose this game. I've gone I've gone big for Coventry as well. I've gone 3-0. Um, to Coventry? Three -nil Coventry. Yep, to Coventry. Fine. Uh, I'm with Neil for my sanity as well. Coventry, please. Um, Dave, is your Leicester head on or, or is your logical brain on? Which is no, probably logical neither brain. better than ever. I've gone 3-1 to Leeds. Oh, spoiled. There's always Coventry one. have to win. We have to win. They've got a game in hand, don't they, in the, the playoffs? Oh, yeah, I know, but Coventry have to. So they'll be really nervous here. Did they have a bad result last time? I can't remember now. Um, well, they yeah. drew with Watford, didn't they? But then they beat Hall late no, on. Coventry. Coventry. Coventry? Oh, um, I can tell. I think I've got all guys. Coventry. They lost at home to Cardiff, didn't they? Lost they lost Cardiff. home to Cardiff 2-1, yes. Ridiculous result. The week before, they also won 3-1 at home to Huddersfield. Yeah, so, so they'll knows? be nervous. They'll be nervous at but, home. But this is, this is hard. You would admit, though, that this has to be a hard game for Leeds because the Coventry have nothing, they have everything to gain and they have to go for it. Again, yeah, my Leicester yeah. head has ruled it. And I, I, in terms of probably safe betting your prediction points, I guess, you have gone for a Leeds win. Yeah. Chris didn't sit on the fence. It's a miracle, ladies and gentlemen. He he put his last shirt on uh, and he got 2-1 to Coventry. Craig, Craig, Chris and Craig Forian fences are going to start calling it because he's gone for a Desmond. Uh, Scott, get out. Put yourself in timeout and think about what you've just said. <sighs> think about what you've just said. 2-0 uh, two, two Coventry. You've got to go higher than that, mate. You've got to go higher than that. I thought you'd gone all the way around and that scared me. That, it was this one that threw me off. <laughs> this is the one I meant to put up, but that, that, that one's better. But 2020, I don't know what you was going for then. Scott, oh dear. Comes two leads, one says John. Uh, seems Scott. I mean, I'd take this. I would take this. It wouldn't benefit either of them, essentially, if Ipswich and, and Leicester were to get three points. Um, you know, and Comptry would move further away from from Norwich if they were to win their game. So I'd, I'd take the draw. Neil went 2-1 to Coventry. Two own goals, says Wolves. Um, Cov score all three goals. I mean, why not get an own goal in there for it? Uh, my old oh, minus 20. I thought you were playing some backwards, um, some backwards sport there, Scott. Um, I like it though, but it's not possible, I don't think. And and Craig from all up the cherries in all departments has gone for a Coventry 1 0 win. And well, 3 1 Coventry. Burgers and good yeah. score predictions. I like it. I really want to be wrong. I do. Uh, Chris finally used the VARD. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what you're trying to say to me there, Scott. Now then, we'll move on. We'll move on. It's, uh, I want to say relegation six-pointer. Millwall are a little bit more out of distance, but they are in shooting down. It is the Terriers, Huddersfield Town in 22nd. They're hosting Millwall. I mean, you know my disdain for Millwall. In fact, anybody, probably even Millwall fans, has a disdain for Millwall. Having said that, a point is probably... No good for it's probably better, more beneficial for Middlesbrough uh, for Middlesbrough for Millwall than it is Huddersfield because the points gap's only a couple of points between the relegation slots and themselves. And obviously, depending on how results go, it could become a vital point, but you feel like it would benefit anybody. Having said that, it is my bore on ITV4. I've gone nil nil. Chris has backed Huddersfield for the win. Craig has also backed Huddersfield for the win. Chris went 1-0. Craig went 2-1. Dave, is anybody stealing a march in this? No, I've gone 0-0. Nil -nil. Hey, he's copying my own work, folks. You heard it here first. Copying, copying the, uh, the, the channel leaders. Well, not channel itself, but the show leaders. 
for the homework. Despicable folks, eh? Dave's gone nil nil. And is it gonna be that simple? Is it that boring? Yeah. Oh, you're a man of few words, Dave, and I love it. It it shouldn't be, should it though? I mean it should be four three or something like that, or four all, but well you could predict it, Dave. You've got two. I three, don't think two, three, three, two. I, No, I don't think Middlesbrough will go for anything. I think they'll they'll be happy. Oh, I don't think they will either. It's Millwall playing in this game, mate. Don't make my mistake. Yeah. I think Millwall won't go for anything. What did I say? He said Middlesbrough. He did a me. Oh, for Christ's sake. It's been a long day. Um, yeah, I don't think Millwall will go for it. A point would be good for them, um, especially with Birmingham and Plymouth having a chance of losing. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, know, I, think, I, think just they'll, I think they'll cut their coat and manage a draw. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the bus. Paddy's gone 3 1 Millwall. Never liked you anyway, Craig. Uh, John's John's got a brain. He went he went two one Huddersfield. Uh, I can't give I, Neil. I, I I used to like you, mate. Why did you go Millwall win? Well, we would back a Millwall win. Scott always liked you. Kevin, we used to be mates. Used to be, all these people going for Millwall three pointers. Probably going to be a boring score, but four be four players player sent off. Yeah, and two of them will be grandmas fighting in the crowd. As well, Scott, I tell you, the Millwall, like, they'll fight amongst themselves. We, we've not got but, these fans in tonight. No, because, oh. because they haven't crumbled. They haven't crumbled. It's they haven't got really anything to moan about, and we're not playing. They're not coming in to show our support. If you know a Leeds fan, folks, I think it's, it's fair. I'm gonna, in fact, Dave, I do apologise. We're going to take you out. For any of you out there that do know any Leeds fans, right? obsession, almost stalkerish-like behaviour, it is a problem. We need to bring it to our attention. So to, to any of you that have Leeds fans, just check if they're okay. We haven't seen them in the chat for a few days. The nice ones come in, they're okay. But these delusional ones alone, and unfortunately, I just want to make... We, we, we at LTID TV wouldn't feel we wouldn't be doing the Leeds fans a disservice if we didn't show and raise our concern. So please, check in on our Leeds fan. Make sure they're okay. Thanks for that, Dave. I just want to send a heartfelt message yeah. to them. Um, um their parents have banned them from the internet or something. Or maybe just the internet banned them for it. Uh, <laughs> Dave, you, you you get the blame then. You've jinxed it if they find the channel tonight. Um, <laughs> no, right. Neil, couldn't agree with you more. Not all of them. We do have some decent ones, like I, I yeah, must we say. Do. I, we do have some decent Leeds fans in that actually have a brain cell and, 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 and talk sensible and, and very good friends of the channel. Um, and John says, Do you, Brad, do you have uh, more wolf for them and Stoke? Good, Stoke good just bored me. They just need to get they need to maybe do a Leicester, get relegated to League One, come straight back up, and then be more exciting. They're just the dull side that kind of sporadically goes on holiday to the Premier League and then comes back for about 30 years and then goes on a sporadic holiday to the Premier League and then comes back for 30 years. Um They've always been boring. Pulis Jordan, boring. how did lads big up? Guess you will be winning two 0 against Birmingham. Well, you think that because next up on the list is Leicester, and you guys, you guys really thought a Leicester channel would quickly talk about the Leicester game as if we didn't want to keep you on them tender hooks, reeling you in. We'll talk about them near the end, Jordy. You'll find out what we predicted then. We are going to go to two teams that have probably been up there on the list of disappointments this season. You know, if you was awarding disappointing seasons <laughs> and expectations, Middlesbrough still have an outside chance. Uh, let's try and plug the new route into the digits. Uh, oh, well, sorry, let me just deal with a idiot. Thank you very much. See you later. Oh, oh what a shame. What a shame. What a shame. He had to ruin his own day. Ah, oh, well, well, thanks for the view. That'll count. Thanks, thanks. All you've done is help the thanks channel. Thanks for get popping in. ka -ching. Um, For you, sir, they are doing delightfully miserable this season. Unfortunately, not going down by the looks of their league position. But, Jordy, they are nowhere near the playoffs. They have plummeted down. But you'll hear how well or badly they've been doing in, in, in just a few ticks of a, of a second. Middlesbrough in ninth, hosting the second team that I'd say has been disappointed this season, and that is um, Swansea, the other team from all the way from Wales, as uh, in fifteenth. It's not been a great season for both, has it? Yeah, no, you know, I, 
I had Borough in my playoff places, I think. Well, I think others season. did as well, Dave. They were probably up there. They always seem to be in and around it, yeah. don't they? they always they've had, be they've had some brilliant runs and then some nightmares. So consistency is a big problem. But I think they'll beat South uh, Southy. So who the hell am I talking about? I think they'll beat Swansea 2 1. You think so, that Middlesbrough are going to strike back with a bang and keep I their bank playoff Spon- hopes alive? No, but I think they'll beat Swansea. Well, you've made for a full house, Dave. You've gone 2 1 to Middlesbrough. I've gone 2 0 to Middlesbrough. Chris miraculously hasn't gone back to a draw, and he's gone 1 0 right. Middlesbrough. Ooh. And Craig has also broken free of the habit of a lifetime, and he's predicted a win. He's gone 2 0 to Middlesbrough. So people agreeing there. Borough 2, a Swansea 0 says. So you know what happens, don't you? I'll check I'll check the group later. Everybody's gone for a Middlesbrough win, so Swansea are guaranteed three points. Geordie is splitting the difference, uh, metaphorically, not literally. He's gone 1-1. One, one. Scott, I'll have whatever you're having, mate. He's gone Middlesbrough 5, Swansea 1. Scott, do you just not <laughs> like Swansea? I need to He's know. He's a gold machine, isn't he? Gold machine. He is. He loves it. He loves his goals. Minus 20s, 7 pluses, 10 ups, whatever he wants to give, he'll give them. <laughs> Middlesbrough 2, Swansea 1, says Craig. Neil yeah, is awesome, definitely going to be purchasing some, some fence, for, some foreign fence panels. He's gone for another draw. Both are poor sides. Both had poor seasons. I agree with you, Neil. So, moving on on the list, as I just uh, type it down, Q- a resurgent QPR. They were in trouble not too long ago. They uh, sacked the sixth member of Take That, I mean, Gary Ainsworth, um, and then they replaced him with their new manager, and he has had them rise up the table. Once below their opposition, Sheffield Wednesday, or 23rd, but they are now flying high and up the table. Dave, QPR 16th, resurging well against my specialist team. Whether they win, lose, or draw, there's a 90% chance I've predicted them to do what they do. Dave, Sheffield Wednesday need to get something from this game. QPR, probably a good four points, I'd say, probably away from guaranteeing their safety. Maybe not mathematically, but astronomically, difference in points they probably have. So, all to play for at Loftus Road. Did I still call it Loftus Road? That many teams have no. probably sponsorship grounds. No, Did I not think they do. Is it not Loftus Road anymore? There's a quiz question for you in the ground. Who, who knows? Is it still Loftus Road? Well, they might have changed it, it back, actually, now. They've had it, it in that Air Asia died, FC stunt? Yeah, is, it, is it Air no, Asia? No, no. It, um, it was a young lad that died. Oh, no. I was player. Player. Oh, well. So they um, changed it to his name for a year or two. Well, that's, a, gr- might... that's a great honour that they did that, yeah. even if it was just for the season or not. Might have gone back again now. But, but I think Rangers will win 2-1. Uh, 3-1, sorry. Oh, really? This might not be permanent marker, but once I write it in, it's permanent. So 3 1. 3 1. 3 1. You heard it here first, guys. Remember, 48 minutes and 30 odd seconds, Dave said his exact prediction. Uh, Is this the guy you're on about then, Dave? Because Craig has it here. The Kyan Prince Stadium. Oh, it still is, is it? You know what? Absolutely lovely. Love that gesture. Love love, love that. Show, show I actually like rain QPR. A, it's not easy in the away section sitting there, but um, I quite like the, the club. I will always have fond memories of QPR for one reason and one reason only. David Nugent chasing a squirrel around. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. That was the best part of that game till Vardy scored the winner. Because yeah, it, was, yeah. it wasn't that brilliant a game, if I'm being honest. Well, yeah. you've gone 3-1 QPR. Chris has gone 2-1 QPR. Craig's joined you. He's gone 3-1 QPR. But I've gone for a Desmond because I, I just feel like Sheffield Wednesday are going to show a little bit of fight and keep it going. But what did you got lovely people in the comments say? Ronald, he went 3-0 to QPR. Uh, QPR win for nil. I'm feeling a bit silly. Um, Sheffield, Ooh. I mean, Scott's gone for a, an absolute score fest at 4-0 four, four to Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday fans will be delighted with you, Scott. Uh, now, if even even more stupid for going for a draw because that's what Paddy's gone for. Uh, and if you don't get the reference, he he gets called out is his nickname because he's vet and he Paddy from Emmerdale. The joke wears thin on me. Um, just Chris, <laughs> he's already gone three one to the Owls though. Um, oh. It's it is 
it, it, it you could see it happening. Um, I agree, I'm six foot bloke, and my legs felt crushed there, but it's a good stadium. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I've not had the pleasure to go there. Um, who knows, maybe one day in my lifetime we'll be able well, to go. Let's hope not for a while. Well, Until yeah, I hope in that sense it's a while, but I hope I get a chance to go. Pre-season friendly. I'll, I'll, I'll take the trip then. I'll get loads of leg room for a pre-season friendly. It'll be fine. Um, but yeah, moving on to the team that John wants to know whether I hate more than Millwall. And my answer comes in my prediction. Because they are at home to the team that is the most has been the most secured of a playoff spot for a long, long time. Norwich, not entirely secure. Southampton have probably now conceded the automatic race. But the team in fifth, you could call them fifth Chester United. It feels like they've been there since game week one. I am, of course, talking about West Bromwich Albion. Um, <coughs> playing 18th Stoke, who have just started to pull away from the relegation zone. Uh, is it the Bet 365 Stadium still? Um, so, yeah. um, Stoke at home, West Brom. I don't care that it's West Midlands. I don't care that we have some form of mediocre rivalry with them because they're West Midlands, not East Midlands. And it's probably more sky induced money when we're in the same leagues together. <coughs> but you want to know if I hate these more than Millwall? Um, well, I went 2 0 West Brom. Yeah, I'm going to rip the band-aid off. I, I went 2-0 West Brom. Chris went 3-0 West Brom. And Craig sees it being the bore on ITV4 because he went 0-0. Dave, what are you thinking? 2-2. Mm. You've gone for a Desmond. Yeah. You don't muck around, do you? When he gives, well, Stoke have picked up just lately, haven't they? They've picked up a couple of good results, I think, remember rightly. Oh, oh well, Westbrook. there you go. Well... Oh. Sure. Craig says for his mate Car Carlos Carbaron. Um, I, I don't know if he's your mate, but um, <coughs> we don't know. He, he hasn't denied it on Twitter though, has he, Paddy? So you might you might be telling the truth there. Uh, Scott's gone for a ball draw. He's gone nil nil, and John has gone two one to the baggies. Now, Jordy, if you're still here, if you're still here, don't worry. Why, Pet? We're on to your favourite favourite side in the world, and I say that with the most hintest of sarcasm I can or lucky for some which probably makes it even more funnier for Geordie to hear it Sunderland are in 13th it's a battle um, uh, it's a battle of the mid table it's the summer holiday game if you will because it's 12th place Bristol City uh, sorry Geordie I'll say this quietly for you I've gone Sunderland to win this game 1-0 probably because I'm still feeling salty about Bristol beating us um, on Good Friday, or Bad Friday as it was for us. Chris has gone 2-1 to Bristol City, and Craig's gone 1-0 Sunderland. I mean, this game doesn't really matter, does it, for either side? It's Neither of them can go up, neither of them can go down. Are we being too optimistic predicting a win here, Dave, for either side? Yeah, I, I think Bristol City will win 1-0. Ooh, were well, you not alone, Craig? Chris also thinks one uh, two one to Bristol. Sunderland's I mean, last home yeah. game. They got done by Blackburn, wasn't it? About four or five. Five one, one nil. Five one. Five one. Mm. Yeah, but you never know, do you? The Joyce's division again. I'm it's like, it's terrible it's division for all this prediction stuff, isn't it? It is. I can't. I, hopefully, we can get back to the Premier League. Uh, mm. Scott went two 0 to Bristol City. Uh, John's gone struggling. Sunderland one, Bristol City two. Um, and Neil says work with the Sunderland fan. He said they have no chance. He's gone 2 0 to Bristol. Well, we move from oh, and last but not least, Ronald McDonald comes in with a 2 0 to Bristol City. I thought Bristol uh, played well against us, really. Say last, and of course, the you know, the, the, the burger supplier to Ronald's uh franchising army. He comes in and goes 1 0 Bristol City going on a run now. A sweet FA to play for. It helps teams, doesn't it? It can help teams go into a good form. Um, so that moves us on to the very last game of game week 41. Uh, well, before we talk about this massive game, of course, this is the last game on this list before we talk about the huge game of the weekend. It is 14th place Watford uh, at home. To a team that you might as well just call 8th eight, North End because Preston are 8th, which 
maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe it's a, Mal, a Mandela effect or something. But ever since they've been in the championship, Dave, they go first. They stay there for about seven or eight weeks, look really out of place. They drop into the playoffs, capitulate down the league, and then finish eighth. Yeah. And surprise, surprise to nobody, Preston R, eighth. I mean, it's scary. Typical, you couldn't see anybody beating them early on in the season. They were playing no, so you well. wouldn't. But like I said, Dave, for the last three or four weeks, this is exactly we what Preston do. They start off like a yeah. rocket, they fizzle out like a like a firework, and then they kind of bob up and down like a like a lilo on a on a swimming pool. Oh, staggering! Mm. They've got the game in hand on the top six, well, the, the playoff places anyway. They need to um, win it though, Dave. That's the thing. They need to win this definitely, but their goal difference is minus three. I'm just looking at this now. Coventry yeah. are just above a plus seventeen. That yeah. kind of says it all for Preston. And, it, and if you ever said goal difference counted, Dave, I know, yeah. um, I know one season, Leicester. I think when we were in the top four, but we had a terrible goal difference. It yeah. was like plus four or something, which sounds okay in the Premiership, but the teams around us are on plus 12, plus 11, and that's a big... And in the Premiership, it's yeah. even harder. It just is. I mean, no disrespect to Championship, it really is to overturn that goal difference. Um, right. So I have no idea why I've gone for this result, but I've gone for Watford 1, Preston 3. Well, you never know. Could be goals galore. What, You've got totally one. unpredictable. Watford could win right. six. Well, nil, this is it. It, just t- it. it would just be typical of Preston to turn up and win this game because yeah. I've gone 2 0 to Preston. So, same okay. outcome goals wise, just not as many goals. If I told you one of Crystal Craig sat on a, two, sat two. On a draw, sat on a fence panel, and you had to put your entire life savings on it, who would you bet on? Oh, Chris. Oh, well, congratulations. Whatever your life savings are, you would have just doubled them. Chris has gone for a Desmond. Um, I can safely say no spoilers needed, but he hasn't gone for a draw in the last game of like this, this game week. Uh, Craig has gone 2 on Watford, so he can see Watford doing it. And it just seems like, I suppose you say it's about a lot of teams, depending on who they play. It's just really unpredictable, isn't it? Watford, yeah. two, uh, Preston 1, says John. Uh, one one, both just boring clubs. Says Neil. Uh, Scott, well, he's in goal, goals, goals, and he's gone five nil Preston North End. I think you hate Preston. Uh, you hate Watford as well. Uh, end of the day, eighth. Yeah, that is who Preston are. Uh, one one draw. Said. Uh, said yeah, good point. Said Craig there. Uh, God, they haven't sacked anybody yet, have they? What for Lost nearly went the season about sacking the manager? Uh, I don't think he thinks it's a nick of one win there, said Ronald. Uh, I mean, they nearly did. Maybe next season. I doubt it, but maybe. More splinters for Chris. Yeah, I hate to be the person who's got to get the tweezers out for him uh, on that one. Uh, as I try and get rid of it, I get a notification telling me that my phone is on charge through my laptop. It's charged. So thanks for that. Yeah, that's nice to know. I know, it's lovely. Uh, so anyway, that's all the comments gone. We are there, we are at the last game for game week 41. There is game week 42 to follow, so stay tuned as we rip through that like a band aid. But before we talk about the biggest game of the weekend, guys, do me a favor look at your screens, keep your eyes open, and then follow these simple instructions. <laughs> Oh, no, Preston have won and didn't want to play. So, in case you didn't see that, it is like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Like the video. Uh, there's been loads of you in through the stream. And a big, massive thank you, thanks to this show, Dave. Don't we have to thank uh, yourself for this, a massive supporter, because we are in conjunction with Sorry Hills Community Radio. So make sure you use yeah. the scanner codes for the uh, TikTok and uh, the Instagram. I assume that could be sorry hills radio one no it might be ltrg i don't know if you're on both but do go and check out sorry hills radio.co.uk or is it com yeah co.uk we're on more things than i actually know about so we could be on uh, so yeah. so much to shake a stick at it and of yeah. course as always 
before we talk about the big game of the weekend, the Leicester versus Birmingham, it's no longer the uh, Wagathon derby because Wayne Rooney's so useless he got sacked before the rematch. A bit like his fight with Phil Birdley in the kitchen. He was already out before the second round. Um, but we'll get right into that, Dave, predicting that right after this. The TalkSport Fan Network is the ultimate on-demand destination for the UK's best fan-led football podcasts. Including Leicester Till I Die. Independent analysis and reaction for the Foxes faithful. The TalkSport Fan Network. Unbeatable club-dedicated content created by the fans for the fans. Follow the podcast on the TalkSport Fan Network. 4-0. Dave, Dave broke the sound barrier. He didn't even wait for a video to go. Wow, Dave, you've gone 4-0. A big win. And against Norwich, Dave, it was more get the result, worry about the performance afterwards, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? It was one of, and, and we were we were great, weren't we? Because we managed to get both. We didn't just win the game, but we were very in control of it and very comfortable. I know Norris yeah. took a lead and they hit the side netting. But for the majority of that game, Leicester were fairly comfortable, Dave. And for the first time in a few weeks, we actually looked like a team that if you said who was challenging for the top and who was struggling to hold on to playoffs, you would have known who was who, wouldn't you, in that yeah. game? The only so, thing that worried me and still does was the slowness. Not the slowness out the back, but not picking out the early passes, the easy passes. You know, we were, we had so much space at the back that we mm. could have done it a lot quicker than we did. And I don't mean we rush it. I mean, just getting that ball out to the wings a bit earlier um, and getting it out to the wing backs or whatever you call them nowadays. Um, but we still fannied about at the back of it and it nearly cost us at one stage. Um, and that's the only worry I have, really. I think we're still, we looked a lot sharper with the ball up in the yeah. midfield and up front. Um, we made some good chances. Um but Norwich were poor, so it's difficult to judge. They, they look, they were, but you can only play what's in front of you, and it's not our fault yeah. that we win three one. That Norwich didn't turn up. And the, the, the one thing that works in Leicester's advantage, I suppose, is and why I agree with you. It's a bit of concern that we have a habit of conceding a goal and gifting chances. The thing that keeps Leicester in some kind of positive positivity, you felt it against Norwich, is they might concede one, but we're more than capable and more not more optimistic probably than we've ever been for a long time that we could go on and get two maybe three and turn yeah. the game right on its head it's something we did earlier in the season it's something we need to make sure we're still capable of doing if such an occasion arises you've gone for a comfortable 4-0 win i okay. thought i'd been optimistic i've gone 3-0 leicester i'm sensing a hat trick incoming so that's not gonna happen sorry folks i've ruined that for you if you bet on a hat trick ask for a refund uh chris has gone 2-0 leicester Craig still sees us conceding. He's gone 3-1 to Leicester. But, again, I probably am getting a bit too ahead of myself here. Is it is it right to be sat here and expecting a performance and the three points? Or is it just a case of same as Norwich? If we win it 1-0, we win it 1-0. It well, yeah, that's that's the answer. But I think we'll, we'll, we'll win it in style. I think Vardy will start. At least I hope he does. Mm. Um, and he'll be as confident as hell. I mean, his, his ratio... For minutes on the pitch, I think he's better than anybody for goals, um, anybody in the league. So he's, he's confident. OK, it was a tap-in to, to a degree, but even so, they all he goals needed on it. Go after Bristol, didn't he? Yeah. He just needed he that did. goal, no matter how it came. Um, I mean, but he's got an amazing record this year. Everyone, you know, he's not played that much, obviously, but he's been injured. But he's still got a brilliant goal-to-game ratio and goal-per-minute ratio. Yeah, his yeah. goal to games ratio off the bench is just as prolific. I mean, he's well, 16 goals a season. Yeah. Can't be arguing with 16 goals a season, can you? No. Um, and the other guys that are the top seven. scorers, are, yeah, the ones that are top scorers have played nearly every game. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, 10 years is younger, if not more. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, credit where it's due. Uh, John, no surprises here, folks, unless you're not a Leicester fan, I guess. But John's gone 3-1. Spot the Leicester fans if you can. The Robbie Savage girl, Derby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also the case, funny enough, when we played Derby, isn't it? Because I remember his infamous press conference where he joked that he'd played for Leicester and Blackburn against Derby and always used to beat them. So he felt he owed Derby and signed for him. And that rubbed Derby fans the one rub, up the wrong way. Dale, nice to see you, mate. He goes Leicester City 4, Birmingham City 1. Ronald sticking to his guns. 
He's gone for a 4 0 prediction. Up the yeah. Cherry Sunil department. Oh, yeah. I, I love you, Craig. Just to take back what I said about you earlier, you are a nice chap. <laughs> Don't listen to what everybody else says about you. He's gone 5 0. Neil's gone 3 0 to you guys, from a poor side. Uh, I'll take that. I'd be less less thrilled with it, Scott, but I, 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 I if you give it me now, I, 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 I'll run to the shop and cash it in and take it. It's an um, important game to actually score a lot of goals against them. It is because the goal difference could become pivotal. Yeah, um, it sends out a message as well to Leeds and Ipswich. Yeah, I think we've got a greater one on Ipswich. I think the worry is if it's between us and Leeds for either first or potentially even second place, we'd want to have them goals. Dale's conference is two Leeds one, Norwich three, Ipswich one. So you're catching up. Good to see you in here, Dale. Uh, Dave's gone 1 0 Leicester or 10 Leicester. Either way, it's a perfect score to give. Hopefully, indeed, Vardy and Ricardo start. That'd be great for us. Ronald, I think it's key we have some players. Sorry, Dale. <laughs> it's which saying his part there, Neil. Good, good to see you back in, back in your team. So, there we go. All of us have gone for a Leicester win, which isn't really surprising. It is Leicester side ITV, isn't it? Uh, we're yeah. in big trouble, aren't they? we go for big a game week 42. Just thought Ooh. I'd let you know. So, you know, I'll give you a minute. You know, if you go to the link down below, LTI TV 2, click over there, hit subscribe and check out the videos. You've got women's content. as Leicester City. Women's team we're following as best we can with them. And we've got a brand new Leicester City quiz called the Leicester City Football Pyramid. So if you like football quizzes and you fancy a go, maybe you want to check out the quiz, see what it's all about, go and check them out and do that good stuff over there. Okay? All right, we'll give them, we'll give them a couple of seconds, guys. Because I know you people, you're doing it now. And some of you might have closed this one off to come back to it. I see, see the viewers going like that. So I know you're going over to that channel. You're hitting subscribe and coming back to this one. And you've turned notifications on, haven't you? You have, haven't you? Right, that's good. Right, now the band-aid gets through it tough, Dave. Yeah. Game week 42. We talked in depth about the rest. But these ones, we have no idea how they're going to play this weekend. To how it's going to bear in and how you predict these things. You do try and get a feel for it, don't you, Dave? I can't believe some of my predictions here. Well, neither can most people, Dave. There's a lot of goals <laughs> in your picks, and not many zeros. I can say that. Um, but you're never boring. You don't go for uh, you don't go for draws. Uh, no, I've gone for one. Two, um, three, so yeah, we're going to skip three. over the first one and leave the yeah. Millwall dirty Millwall. Um, yes, John, I went two 0 for West Brom against Stoke. Compare the two. That's all I'm going to say. We're going to skip over them and do them last. But what we're going to do at this point in the show is I'm going to read out the fixtures that are coming up over the Tuesdays and Wednesdays and, and whatnot. I'm going to tell you what everybody's predicted on my list here. And then Dave's going to give his prediction and we're just going to move on. Because it's pointless trying to talk about a game. We don't even have the game before information. So, are you ready? Try and join in the chat in the comment below if you want. Plymouth at home to QPR. I've gone 2-0 to Plymouth. Chris has gone 2-0 to QPR. And Craig has gone 2-1 to Plymouth. Dave? 4-1 Plymouth. 4-1 Plymouth. Oh, dear. And now my pen's run out. And the round robin, that's what I want. 4-1. Next. Well, it's my favourite predictions team to predict. Sheffield Wednesday at home to Norwich. I've gone 2-1 Norwich. Chris has gone 3-0 Norwich. Craig has gone 3-1 Norwich. And you have gone... Desmond. He's gone for a 2-2 because he likes to ruin things, folks. He couldn't have just gone for a Norwich win and made it a full house. Neil's typing 1-1. One, one. I'm assuming that's for the first one, mate, because I appreciate the typing them out and getting them in. It's going to be quick. Do it. You don't have to obviously go along, but do it. Next one, big game, both clubs. The different what about reasons. Preston? We've, we've got Preston down. Are they playing? I thought I just wrote it down for a 4-1. For that. No, that's a Plymouth that's one. Why Plymouth. don't I put you in that one? You know what it is? Is because I've wrote you in that. I'm going to swap these around. Okay. So Preston Huddersfield yeah. quickly because I've gone, I've gone two nil Preston. Uh, Chris went two one Preston, and Craig went three one Preston. You've gone three one Preston. So you did make that a full house. Don't worry, Dave. I've put two arrows to signify that it's uh. That's all right. It, it makes a difference to me anyway. I'll end up bottom. So. Well, I might give you some bonus Eight points if both, if both oh. come in either way around, Dave. But don't tell anybody. Just send checks no. on the post. We know that. We know that, Dave. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, Plymouth 2-1, says Dave. Sheffield Wednesday 8-0. I wonder why. I wonder why. Um, <laughs> big, 
Big game for these two clubs, depending on how they play at the week. They could have everything to play for still, or they could be trying to piss other teams off. It is Southampton at home to Coventry City. I've gone 2-1 Coventry, so has Chris. Craig has sat on the fence and gone 2-2. Dave has gone 3-3. I knew it had to be in there somewhere. I like you, Dave. I like you 3-3. Once a week, Dave, you have to make sure you go 3-3. Right then. Now some absolute annoying team that need a sponsorship and some help versus Sunderland. And in case you don't know who that team is, it's Leeds United at home to Sunderland. Annoyingly, I've got my predictions head on. I went 1-0 Sunderland, uh, 1-0 Leeds. Chris went 1-0 Leeds. Craig went 4-1 Leeds. Uh, Dave? 4-0 Leeds. Oh, yeah, I didn't expect much more, to be honest with you. I think I begrudgingly went 1-0 because if they win, I maybe... I can't see Sunderland getting anything. Well, I can't, but I kind of just feel like if they're going to ever stumble over to a win Sunderland. against Sunderland... B1-0, please. <laughs> so, they play us at the weekend. They'll be at home in the midweek. And they've got the courteous of hosting Cardiff City. And I think it'll be a boring trip. Because I've gone nil nil. Uh, Chris has gone one nil to Cardiff. Craig's gone 2-1 to Birmingham. Mm, I've gone 2-3 to Cardiff. 2-3 to Cardiff. He's had a 3-3. Three, three. He's gone back That's to the 2-3. Results I mean, go everywhere. Some, some optimism in the chat here. 1-1 one, one between Leeds and Sunderland. I will take that over anyone else's prediction. But uh, Neil's gone 3-1 to Leeds. John went yeah. Southampton to beat Coventry 3-2. Leeds 4-1. Uh, Clark still injured. Who, who's that for? Name that Clark down because there's probably a few Clarks in the division. Um, I can't think of any right now off the top of my head. So, who is who's that still injured for? Uh, Birmingham, Cardiff, we've just done. Bristol City at home to Blackburn. I've gone 3 1 Bristol City. Uh, Chris has gone for a Desmond. Shock horror. Chris in a draw. Who saw that one come in? We did. And Craig's gone 2 1 to Bristol City. 2 2. You just like to copy Chris, don't you? Make him feel not left out with your Desmonds. 2-2 two, two, yeah. there for Dave. And then, one. well, both these teams could have their playoffs hope stashed by the time they meet midweek. Both would be too far off the chasing back if they were to lose. Uh, it is, of course, the Tigers, Hall City, at home to Middlesbrough. Uh, I've gone Hall City to win this one 2-0. Chris and Craig have both gone 2-1 to Hall City. Dave, is it a oh, Jack Clark? Is it? Cheers, Neil. Um, great. Um, Dave, is it a full house from you? Nil, nil. You have to be different and awkward, don't you? Sorry, I don't think they're either of them score a goal in that one. Um, now then, for the last three predictions, I think Chris sent his in, but I didn't get a chance to write them down, so we won't get Craig Chris's the last two. So technically. Well, we will because we're saving the last game to last. But there'll be two games where we don't hear Chris's predictions, and that's why that's my fault, not Chris's. Two one Hall says Neil. Ipswich Town at Watford. I fancy the Tractor Boys to stumble. Uh, I've gone for a one-one draw. Chris is starting to think like me, and it's very scary. I think we need time apart because he's also gone for a draw and he's gone one-one. Craig has gone for a big Ipswich win, though. He's gone three-one. Tracks boys too good, or do you think Watford yeah. have a chance of causing no, something here? Much too good. Four one. Four one to Ipswich Town. Yeah. No need for late goals if you if you're watching Dave's yeah. results and games. Right then, so the two games that will be forever silence in Chris uh, as Dale. I will take that as well, mate. All day long, Watford three, Ipswich two. I'd love to see it. Um, yeah, how I've said it and how I word things and how I've got them written down are. As you put it, it which yes, are at home for that game against Watford. Apologies. Um, sometimes I, I jumble my words. Sometimes I make accidental sense. Um, now then, Swansea at home to Stoke City. I've gone two 0 Stoke. Don't know what Chris went, but Craig has obviously stepped in there for um, for for Chris because he's gone for a draw. He's gone one one. 
What are we saying, Dave? 3 1 Swansea. Ooh, 3 1 to Swansea. I like Only because they're, they're not having to worry about it. Just be yeah, but I like the fun. fact that you've gone for them against um, Stoke. It just makes me feel happy and, and warm inside. <laughs> Swansea 3, Stoke 1. I like that, Dave. I'm happy with you going for that. Okay, so the penultimate game for us before we head down to that massive midweek game um, between some giant of a middle and side and some scummy football side. West Bromwich Albion, the bag is at home uh, to bottom club Rotherham. Let's not let's not torture this. I've gone I've gone three nil Rotherham. I think I'm being nice. Craig went two nil. Uh oh, how many? Yeah, four four nil. Yeah, I'm actually you know what, Dave, I'm not even gonna gasp at that. Four nil yeah. is very, very plausible. Um so now we've said that, watch Rotherham go and win that game one goal to nil. Well, we're here and now the final fixture. And I promise never to sing again because that was awful. And I've deafened you all and definitely put you off the podcast version. Um, but the big game in the midweek, the biggest one of all, um, results could work in Leicester's favour if they do their job at three o'clock at Birmingham and a Norwich cause an upset in maybe the 12.30 or Leeds fail to win in their game um, against Coventry. Um it's a small matter of coming up against a team that's so violently filled, thrilled with Millwall. They'd fight their own mothers, some of them. Well, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. I think that was allegedly. Green Street. Allegedly. Green Street quote, I might have got that wrong. So, again, allegedly and badly copyrighted by me, so don't tell anybody. It is, of course, Leicester versus Millwall. The fans that fight amongst themselves. Uh, look, we know we're going to be biased here. Um some Rotherham predictions coming in. John went 4-0. Um, and Neil's gone 4-1. He's gave Rotherham a goal, which is probably as generous as most people. Uh, yeah, I've I've gone 4-0 Leicester. Um, I think regardless of what happens against Birmingham, whether it's a 1-0 win or, or a, a drabby, you know, or a big 3-0 win or a drabby, drabby game where we just sneak it, I just don't like Millwall. I'm 4-0. Um, at least this time our left back won't shit his pants taking the throw in against Millwall. Uh, I think Doyle's made a firmer stuff than Ben Chilwell. Dave, uh, Chris and Craig, however, are twins of the uh, you know, twins, twins in arms. Uh, both gone 2 1 to Leicester. I used to call that okay. a Leicester special, Dave. Um, well, I've gone 1 0 Leicester. Oh, you urchin, what's with the low score? FA Cup result. Oh, well, yeah, well, I suppose, yeah, that's how I'd take it. But no, we did the same with Birmingham. We were 3 1 up in that game and then gave them time to try and come back into it. You oh. never know. But the book has closed. Another chapter has come to an end as we show some late predictions in the last one. Millwall 1, Leicester 2 says John. Everybody seems a little bit nervy on this one. Can't see you be, can see, can't see you up beating them. 1 3, I'm not biased, as you know. Right, you've, you've said you can't see us beating them. Not and then beating put, them. Well, no, not beating oh, them. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Go spec savers, folks. Glasses work a dream. <laughs> That's my optician. I thought I was reading that. I thought I've reached, put the score the one, wrong way around. I'm reading that wrong. And it turns out it was the latter. Ronald's gone 4 1 Leicester. He's gone for a big win. And Dale Grove has come in last, but by no, no means least. He's gone 2 0 Leicester. Dave, we are yeah. here. We are at the end of the show. You're ready to be like the old man out of Notre Dame. You're like the old man of Notre Dame, aren't you, Dave? Oh, yeah. gonna, I'm free, I'm free, and fall into another trap when somebody else. Uh, let's hope Leeds mess it up. Hey, yeah, that'd be great, I suppose. Um, let's hope we don't lose a game and we win every game. That's, that would be the hope. nicest way of doing it, wouldn't it? Yeah, we do our job, and if they, if then yeah. someone wants to fluff the lines, and someone wants to fluff the lines, Dave, I want a drink of water because I do enough talking for four people, which is why you're on you here do. to take the reins. Dave, your show is in is in conjunction, um, your radio show, sorry, is in conjunction with the production show. Tell tell people more about it and why. Well, we um we're on the internet exclusively on the on the internet, uh, SurreyHillsRadio.co.uk, music beyond belief. So many different genres, different presenters uh, playing their own songs. 
doing their own silly chat if you listen to the breakfast show uh, getting very near the knuckle if you listen to the breakfast show um i haven't had any complaints yet though so fortunately not many anyway not enough to worry about um and uh yeah we've got some terrific music terrific presenters what day is it today friday um on now is um uh, club music from the 80s if you like that sort of thing i don't but this people do a lot of listeners and then at nine o'clock we have um uh whatever it's called edm electronic dance music is it something that like that sounds like a medication device to yeah me, and then there's the... some strange guy on at 10 o'clock tonight till midnight Oh, so some 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 lurking I think he's graveyard tonight, shift. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Some guy called songs. Chris or Crass or Cren or yeah. whatever his name is. He, he's no one important, guys. He's not like he's a owner of this channel. Out lesser time. Well, I, I get so many women asking me for his number when he's and on. And you give so him nine 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 to check into yeah, the. After after disappoint them. Now, what is director inquiries? One five one is it? Is like that? Was that the engineer? Well, I might might have been. One hundred operator. No, I don't know. I don't know either. But there you oh. go, folks. We have got through another mammoth show for you guys uh, in a little over an hour and twenty minutes. For you, include all the talking around. So we've not done bad at all, Dave. Another another double header over and done with. Yeah. And uh, until about well. We're back here at two o'clock, maybe I think it's quarter past two. I could be wrong, but make sure you're in at around two o'clock, either way, as obviously Chris will be back doing the live watch along of the Leicester City Birmingham game. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel before you leave. Before you leave, make sure you're liking the button and you're subscribing on your way out. But make sure you've got your notifications turned on and join well, myself as well, because I'll be here for the pre. The pre-match, the half-time, and the post-match analysis. Uh, Dave, will you be popping in at all like you did last week, or is it just a... I'm a gr granddaughter sitting tomorrow. I think me and the He's missus. granddaughter sitting. So yeah. does that mean Little Piggle will be cheering on from the sidelines? Well, she's a lucky omen, because um, the first match she ever saw when she was just born was the cup final. So wow, she's, she's going to be watching them. everything. Yeah, Dean yeah. no more. Make sure she's in front of the box. Uh, considering her dad supports Liverpool, the other granddad oh. supports Fulham, she's got all Leicester shirts, so perfect. Yeah, uh, you've trained her well, you've trained her well, Dave. Well done on that yeah. one, well winning on that yeah. battle. So, got make sure first. make sure she's she's live for the game on that time. Make sure you join yeah. us for the live watch along. I'd like I said at two quarter past two, I can't remember what time Chris is up for. If you check the channel, it'll be an upcoming channel. You should be able to find it on the playlist somewhere, I'm sure of it. But make sure you're around, make sure you're here for the watch along. And until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Goodbye. Yes, <laughs> took it less time than it took me to get it there. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. See you, guys. Bye out. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And to me, to you, as the banner did indicate, until next time, everybody, take care and come on, you foxes. Thanks for watching. These videos are tremendous. You better like them too or I'll be back. The TalkSport Fan Network is the ultimate on-demand destination for the UK's best fan-led football podcasts. Including Leicester Till I Die. Independent analysis and reaction for the Foxes faithful. The TalkSport Fan Network. Unbeatable club-dedicated content created by the fans for the fans. Follow the podcast on the TalkSport Fan Network.